Hey kids, welcome to Stylus Rumble Effects Time Thing. You know I've been neglecting my effects lately. Doing lots of character drawing and gesture. God, this stuff's so cool. I've just been working too much lately, so I've been kind of a, not wanting to do more effects after doing a huge day of effects. But this is my this is my jam. This is my favorite thing. So let's talk about these insane water effects. This movie has absolutely beautiful water. Like you can tell how much love and time was put into it. And I really think if you're any kind of animator, you should take your favorite stuff and you should break it down like this. Take it so that you have edit down just all the pieces you want to. Like I just took all the water effects from these sequences and just put them, strung them together so that I could just loop them and just admire them. Because they're beautiful. Look at that, the underwater overwater shot with the rippling effect. So this is something that really I couldn't even understand for a long time. How did, how does this stuff happen? How do you do this stuff? And once you have some ideas in your head on how to break this down into simpler pieces, it becomes doable. It's still difficult. This is not going to be easy to do. Look at all, look at this stuff. This is incredible effects. But you can take this from a place of wonderment and confusion into something that you can actually tackle at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take one of the scenes from this sequence, this one here with Nani just rocking out on her surfboard on this huge, beautiful wave. Look at that, it's so pretty. And we're going to break it down into the cheapest effects I can do. <laughs> Let's bring this down even like to a low budget production because I got two weeks to do an episode. I'm the only special effects animator on the show. We're going to need to simplify this down, okay? First thing we're going to do is break it up into its individual pieces. So I'm going to start here with just this wall of water. And the cheapest way to do this is to have a big old rectangle that just pans along that has waves on it. <laughs> okay, so do do do. So let's for argument's sake we'll say that we have a storyboard and it's this show. So we're gonna start with our wave here and it's moving across the screen to the right. So it starts here and it's gonna move that away. So if your show's real low budget, you're done. Hooray, look at those waves. All right, so we'll just take a little peek. Ours is going a little bit slower. So let's move it over and we'll add some space here. So you want it to go fast enough to get a similar look. Steal the shape, it's gonna pan along. So here, and the waves are rolling in the scene, like the, the person who animated these scenes didn't just have a squiggly line like we don't need it to be exact because we don't have the budget for exact. <laughs> We're doing it on the cheap. All right, so that last part where the wave actually completes its roll, it shrinks down a lot. So we're gonna go high quality, low budget, and we're gonna put an envelope deformer on this so that our big flat shape isn't super duper flat. Go along like this. It doesn't need to be super precise, but you wanna try and keep it along the edges here just so that your shapes don't warp in a strange way. And we're gonna get, wanna get all of these lows and highs to have their own point on the envelope deformer. And we definitely want one down at the bottom because if there's nothing down here controlling the bottom, it's going to be controlled by the top and you might just cause yourself some problems. So let's just put a couple on the bottom and then we're gonna link it up, hold the Alt key. And if you press your anchor point here, you're gonna be able to hook that up real easy. And let's rename this to water flat. Cause this is just the flat for our water. Boop, lose it, dink. And then what we're gonna do is just go along and just roll our water a little bit so that it's not perfectly still. And here we've got a huge dip. I need a few extra. And if you were doing this in a studio, you would of course be using your storyboard to get these frames. You never want to steal Disney's animation for your TV project. This is just a demo. Instead of a storyboard, I'm just going to steal the actual wave shapes of this. But when you're doing your own project, hopefully your storyboarder has a real nice thing for you to start with. But if not, then I recommend just doing some rough animation, just doodling some roughs 
of what you want your waves like, where you need your high points, when you need your low points. And then you could do this so that it'll smooth out all those uh, highs and lows and swells without you having to spend a million hours drawing hundreds of frames, because that's what they had to do back in the olden days. And then the final scene, it's come down below the frame. Right, so that's something I want you to watch. See, so you've got, here's your flat shape. And here we start to see another flat shape here folding over the top of it. So this is a secondary shape. And you're hiding the seam of those two simpler shapes with the foam. That's hiding the transition there. It's a very clever use of simplifying the shapes by hiding it behind the complexity. This is just a blue gradient back there, just a moving blue gradient and hot, hidden by the foam. Hide this and see how our waves are going. The swell's coming down, slowing down here, or maybe it's just my computer slowing down. So I'd want to watch this enough times to pick out those places where we're losing our momentum or our swells. There we go. This is more in real time. All right. So there's an awkward downward drop, slow. And this last part, we got some awkward drops. And that's just a matter, like we just arbitrarily threw down some keyframes. You can see down here, some curves are just, uh, they're ending their lifespan as we go along. So what we can do is just open these curves up and make it so that they're not as uh, abruptly changing shape. We want to make sure that all our curves are very fluid. Here, we're just going to bring in some fluid movement ease out all the curves and that'll be our first step into making this look a little see like this is a crazy big jump so i'm going to bring this curve back boop and give it a little bit more room to deal with that movement here we can take that one out because it's just heading straight in the same direction so we'll take this curve out yeah so it's coming down yeah taking that out is not going to affect it here, it's not changing direction, so we can take that one out. And I'm going to raise this up to get a little bit more movement. So here we have a big drop in everything. So this guy here, move the drop back. And we're just going to take a few minutes so that we get less of these huge abrupt changes where we don't want them. We want to make sure that we're controlling this. So this is something you'll get more accustomed to just playing around with these curves through practice. Like here, we've got it, it's staying very high, up, 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 and then a very abrupt down. So if we pull that back, it'll slow down the, the sinking of it, but we could also change the shape of it like this, so that we're getting just a, more of a flow. So that's enough of that. We could spend, I mean, this is something that's worth spending extra time on to make sure it's working well. And then the next thing we have to do is start taking this big obnoxious block and turning it into something a little bit more water-like and with a little bit more shape. So there's two ways that they're doing that And here. One of them is this gradient. So up here, it starts with a dark and then it comes down to a light down here. So you can see the darker blue to the lighter blue. So that's going to start to give it a little bit of roundness on the cheek. And then the next thing is these beautiful waves that they have rolling up over the thing. So just keep an eye on those, right? And see, we're starting to get, this is really describing the form of that shape, right? So we want to do this on the cheap. First of all, we can just put in a simple gradient. Uh, so let's use our, we'll just steal the colors that they have. I think they're great. So we're going to steal from the light to the dark. Oops like to the dark and let's just bring the saturation stuff up because color picker is not perfect. And on this layer, we're just going to slap in a super cheap gradient. So we want to have the light part at the bottom, dark part at the top. And now we're just going to use this here as a cutter. Cutter. So we only want to see our gradient, which we of course need to bring all the way across. We're going to name it blue gradient. And this guy is going to be the boss. And there we go. So the next option you have, and every choice you have is based on time. 
Um, you could make sure that your gradient animates so that the, well, let's make sure we have a little bit of free upper range here because we don't want to just have an empty spot, but we can animate along our gradient so that the top of the gradient, like when the water is, is lower, your gradient is a little bit compressed. And then when it's higher, your gradient is a little bit less compressed. So it looks like the water is rolling away from us a little bit. But again, this is something that you could spend as much or as little time on as you want based on the quality that you need. If you're doing it super cheap like that, you just want to make sure there's no big jumps as it moves along. None of the, the blue is not distracting you in any way. You just want it to feel like it's got a little bit of volume to it. And I think this is working well. There's no big jumping. In, like you, you almost can't even tell that the gradient's doing anything. But if we took that off and we just moved along, then this part would get very dark when it went up higher. It's something that isn't going to be super noticeable, but will add a little bit of polish that you need to fake because we got no time. All right, the next thing we're going to do, next step, we want to get some of these beautiful lines going across like this. If we were doing a beautiful feature, we could sp we could move along and say, oh, and now the water is sort of this way. And then over here, you can see there's a roundness that's up here like this. You're getting some more S curves. And then as we move along, maybe you want to go a little bit like this, like you can just have a little bit of luxury there. Oh, look, that's nice. Here we've got a nice shape of the water like that. Very pretty. And then as we come over here, this is like, you gotta look at this stuff, look real close. The water starts turning. Did you see that? So here we've got the water going like this. And now the water's starting because these people are brilliant. They're actually getting the movement of that water in all along your scene. How many, this is 253 frames long. Ideally, in a magical land of prosperity and love of animators, we would get to go and go through all those frames and do absolutely beautiful things. But because we are cheap, <laughs> we're gonna make something real cheap. So I'm gonna just take a look as I go along and we have a choice of ultra super duper cheap, kind of okay, and a lot of effort. So take a look at your time budget. And for today, because I don't wanna spend a million hours doing this demo, I'm gonna go with kind of like super low budget to medium, but like more towards low budget. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at the shapes. We have some shapes that are sort of like this, we have some shapes that are sort of like this, and then a various amount of branches coming off this, like this one you can see. We have that shape, that's this guy here. So what we're going to do is a simple, super simple one, and we're gonna make it, let's say nine frames, and we're going to, boop, cycle this for a hundred times. Well, okay, 22 times, is that enough? Nope. All right, cycle it all the way along. And then we're going to add a little watery shape like that. I think it's the smoke video where I go over exactly how I set up these cycles, but it's really pretty simple. You just copy and paste the things forever and then just add a little detail, add a little detail. Beautiful. Number one is done. Next guy, select the range of things you want to add empty drawings to right click in your timeline view because where you click is important and then in your exposure it gives you all sorts of different options there i think i have a video on this too so the starting value is one this means drawing is going to be called one the increment it, the next drawing will be called two because the increment's going up by one and it's going to hold each frame one frame if you want something on twos you can put twos but i like to do my cycles on ones and then convert to twos because I only have to go over one to do the next drawing. Copy, paste special, and we're going to need it about 28 times because 22 is not enough. And then we're going to do something like this. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be one of our V ones. And we can, uh, like the first one, I duplicated the drawings all the way along. This one, we're just going to do a real loosey-goosey drawing of the original drawing. And that's oily. 
it'll make your drawing boil. But maybe you want your water to be wiggly. Maybe you got a wiggly sort of a water. That's fine. You just slap a jack some of these shapies on here and then make sure you in between your last one so that they sort of line up to one another. So here we've gotten much taller. And what we can do is go back another one and then in between again, just tighten that up a little bit. And then we could do an additional thing where we get some of these other shapes on top. Choose an arbitrary start point. You don't want all your stuff to start at frame one. And then you could do this. And then build some little hooks on. Basically, figure out what shapes you're going for. You can go as elaborate with this as you want. You can go super simple. It's all about time. I love doing super elaborate thousand drawing effects. That's my favorite thing in the world. I could just sit forever and just draw like all this tedious stuff, but... For some reason, the budget doesn't allow that. I don't know why. So I'm gonna put in some little drips and stuff. Who knows? There we go. So do as many of these as you want. I'm gonna do two just because I got stuff to do, guys. This is a demo. Name these stripes. Sure, we'll name those stripes. And we're going to duplicate them because we can only afford two. Just we're broke. <laughs> And of course you can change the color of them. I like working in purple. I find it very easy to see. You can change them to the color once they're done. I just like being able to see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna add some deformer. And I'm intentionally making them longer. It's intentional, okay? And I'm going to do a little sneaky trick where I sneak the deformer above the peg. And then once I animate my deformer into place, I can just slide my guy along the deformer <laughs> because we're poor, <laughs> right? So if I were to just show you, it goes along vertically and it's gonna slide right along that curve, any curve you like. All right, so then you're gonna need additional pegs on top. Beep, beep. And those ones are going to build, bring them over into place like this. We're going to have our deformer move along the water shape and now our cheap little curve that we've created is going to follow along wherever we tell it to go. All right. So let's take a look at our water flat. And again, based on the amount of time you have, you can set up as elaborate a curve as you have time for. You can do every piece of the wave thinking about the shape of it and the direction of your little wavies and stuff like that. You can spend a lot of time really perfecting it. We want something that's just loopable. And then it should stay, yeah. And I don't think mm, a few of the waves get higher than that, but not really. And then I'm gonna put duplicate this frame and drag it over so that here, so just duplicate this whole area, drag it over, and it's going to stay still for that area. Oop. And then we're going to copy all of it, including our rest period where it's not doing anything. And then we're going to paste special. Boop. And we're going to do it about 15 times across. See, it's shooting up. So you can go along and address each curve. Like here, maybe you want your curve like that instead. And on this part, maybe you want your curve because it's shallower. Um, you want to flatten it out a little bit. Just make sure that your curve gets out of the way, out of the camera view by the time it ends. And so you can move along the scene as much as you like here and see where you want to adjust that. The next we will grab this guy and we will do the same thing. And this is why I say this is a really, you're, you're going to decide how much of this stuff you're going to do based on the time that you have. Because if you have 10 different wave stripes, you're going to get a lot more variety. Like right now I only have two and I can duplicate them and move them around, but you're always going to see the same two stripes going along your curve. And these things are a little bit tricky to animate if you're not used to doing it. Um, you have to do it straight up. <laughs> so even though your curve is going along here, remember that when you hide your curve, it's a vertical it's a vertical thing so when you're animating below the curve along the curve you want to go straight up so if if you don't want to have to deal with that brain section just don't put 
don't animate the deformer until after you've done this under this this part here and you won't have to deal with that problem because trying to if you're trying to animate it along the curve you're like oh it's doing crazy things but the secret is just because i've made the deformer go up if you go straight up it, it'll be fine <laughs> it will be okay <laughs> all right so whew, that one's going faster because i started it a little bit farther you don't want it to be above the line and we just want to make sure it it clears oh because it's over here it's going to clear and again we're going to duplicate this frame copy paste special 15 times and if you don't want them to go along at the same rate then just don't do that yeah so let's just take this animation so this is this guy here it's going to drag it back so this guy's going to start halfway up the curve so now they're on a little bit of a different timing and then you can duplicate these again and you can move them around as much as you want remember the top peg is going to move the whole device let's hide those and show these Oop. so we can move the whole device like this or scale it down because we're using the top peg and just make sure that our curve is clearing the frame we don't want to have any of this stuff inside the frame once it's around and then again this under peg is where the actual movement of the thing is going so we're just going to take it like this and move it along so now we've got a number of different swooshies this guy here i don't like that curve at that point and this is where we get into how much time can you allot to this you can go along the entire thing and just delicately dictate every point that your guy is going along changing the the curve this guy here is going crazy so we want to make sure if we're just cheaping out, we want to make sure that at least our cheap option is working okay. Right, cool. And you can duplicate this, obviously, as many times as you want, because there's holes here where there is no stripes. But for demonstration purposes, we're just going to cheap out. Moop, moop, moop. Put all the stripes here. Change their color to a lighter blue. And then we're going to use our mat that we're using for our water to cut our stripes. So once you get here, keep adding as many layers as you need to get as many stripes as you need on screen at any one time because i wouldn't want the empty water and look here we've got this guy hanging out inside the frame Oop. little details like that we're going to want to spend the time maybe i'll do a part two on this where i go into the next one because i've already gone like 40 minutes in and we'll talk about some of these splashes that are happening over the top i think that's a good plan but because i've said stuff like that but in the past and I've gotten distracted and forgotten to do it what you want to do next is break up the next piece of the puzzle so you could add in uh, this splash in the back here behind so this is an independent layer and I mean you could you might be able to just get away with some simple shapes that are animating across um, if you don't need too much of this breakup along the top you could build a small circle or two or three shapes that break up like that and we could just layer them across the top to give the illusion of a lot of work when it, less work has been done then we want to get this overlapping layer here which again we're just going to treat like this green screen cutter we did at the beginning and we'll hide that seam there with that then it's a matter of these trails that's another thing you do independently. And then these splashes would be independent again. So each layer here is something that you can see happening in your brain. You're like, okay, I can see how you would do this one little piece. And you take each little piece and combine them until all your little pieces become something big and wonderful. So in 40 minutes, I've done this, which is not award-winning <laughs> but if you are on a time crunch this is going to be good enough maybe you could spend the time making these stripes giving them a little bit more love in their shape because right now you can see some sloppy brush strokes in there so that's where you would spend the time is creating a really nice nine frame cycle for these guys to generate go through you could even not do any cycle and keep these very simple shapes and just have the simple unanimated shape moving along the form of your waves. That's another way you could cut costs there. You're going to hear me over my fan while it's playing this. So that's another way of saving some time is not actually animating these cycles. Because, um, I mean, you can see now that it's going in real time. They are going quite fast. 
but by animating them you're going to get a little bit of variation in shape so you won't see the same thing going by and you saw how quickly i put together these cycles something an abstract simple cycle like that you can put together something a little bit quicker and then you can spend as much or as little time with your deformers as you want really making sure that the curve of your waves are working so if a character is riding along a wave that's a certain shape then you're going to be able to make sure that the the shape is working for the the movement of the scene and just be very diligent about going through the entire thing i can see some little hold up of these cycles Let's see there see this one of them hasn't gone outside of the frame yet and is just hanging out for a while and so we're getting some weird little this guy here see he's separate he comes up and then he stops and then comes back. You're gonna be really diligent when you're doing this very quick stuff that you pay attention to the little details like that because that's where you're gonna hide your cheapness is by paying attention to the details of things like that. Keeping things moving out of frame, getting any of the shapes that you want, the format you want, that's gonna hide some of the duct tape. So that's it for this one. Like I said, I would like to do another one on this. So hopefully I'll get time before my vacation. Let me know if you like this stuff. If you like the drawing stuff, tell me what you like. Cause I don't know. This is my first day. You let me on the internet. Thanks for dropping by. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video.